Hi Flosstube, this is Cam back here again with another weekly update. This is Flosstube number 45. It is currently the 2nd of December, so we are in the final month of the year. Um, just a general disclaimer, I do have my dog next to me. I have to keep a close eye on her right now. Uh, she's got some ongoing um, problems with her, her feet and other areas that I need to make sure she's not licking things raw. Um, we're going to the vet tomorrow morning to get some help with that. In the meantime, I have to keep a close eye on her. So, if you hear any noises that could be her or I might have to tell her to stop looking at something. Um, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Our winter storm that we were expecting turned out to be pretty much of a dud. We got about half an inch of freezing rain, um, which made this grass like icicles. Each blade of grass was covered in ice, um, which is really cool to, to see. And of course, all the trees and stuff were, were covered in ice. Really cool to see. Bad news when you're talking about uh, dangerous roads, both here on the base and to get into town. A lot of people crashed. Uh, we didn't go anywhere all weekend because of the bad roads. And also, when you have a dog with sore feet, and all of a sudden, the grass is like icicles. So it wasn't a fun weekend for her. I've been wrapping her feet so that and going outside with her to make sure that she does her business even though her feet hurt. Um, so it's been a long wait for the vet, but we'll see it, the vet tomorrow morning. All right, let's get to stitching. I have a finish um, and I have some good progress on other pieces. I have a trick or treat off the scroll frame so you get to see, or trick or treat the scroll frame taken apart so you get to see the whole thing. So. In the School of Magical Stitches in Literature last week, it was a really easy week. Um, we were wearing the Horcrux, sharing between uh, three different people in the book, so we had to share it between three different whips. You had to do a minimum of 100 stitches on each whip if you're, you know, not traveling and, and had three whips with you. And then, but then you could keep going and keep earning points. Um, as many as you wanted, one point per 100, as many stitches as you wanted to do. Now, let's see. I did, um, my three were Hogwarts, Travel Poster, Big Red Ship of Life, and Museum Shelf, but I already showed you Museum Shelf last week because I did it on Monday. So, um, Hogwarts, I did the requisite 100 or 200 tent stitches for the first group and then I kept going and I got 398 more tent stitches so I was two tent stitches shy of no actually I think it was 396 four tent you know two tent stitches shy whatever I was close to getting another increment of 100 but I finished it um I have already washed it and ironed it once I might give it another iron because there's a f still a few um, wrinkles on the edges, but there you go. This is complete 10 stitch, except I did go over the uh, welcome to to make it a full cross. Hopefully so you can make it easier to read. So welcome to Hogwarts School. This is by Country Magic Stitch on Etsy, custom order only. I started this, this was my new year, new start, so 1 January, I think I put 36 days worth of work on it, or at least I worked on it for 36 days, sometimes it's only a little, a few stitches here and there. 28 count, 2 over 1, 10 stitch, this is uh, Monaco. So, for another full coverage complete. It was nice to be able to uh, start a new project for the year and also finish it in the same year. And then I went and I worked on Big Red Ship of Life for my monthly rotation on this. And I am in this fourth page, which comes down here and over. So I finished all the border. So I, I finished all of this. And then I brought and I did all of this, these two star motifs, the rest of this part of the mast and everything down here and this little bit 
So that was a total of 1,300 stitches on Big Red Chip of Life. So the only thing left I have to do in December is, let me see if I can get these both, um, these flower motifs and a little bit right here. So continue these little, you know, motifs across and then the three flowers down to about here. So pretty easy little chunk for December coming up. And again, 28 count mushroom even weave by MCG Textiles using DMC 3808. I just left a couple strands parked so I didn't have to secure them and move them because <clears throat> those motifs have to build up more anyways. And then, uh, so I finished Big Red Ship on Saturday. So what to work on on Sunday? Well, I still have, um, I only had five out of 11 or five out of 12 uh, stitching extra credit tests done in, in for year seven. So I picked another one. And I've did 500 stitches on Pretty Little Paris by Satsuma Street as a piece that you started for Magical Stitches this year, which I certainly did. So that I brought down the Eiffel Tower, finished the Eiffel Tower, and then um, filled in more of Notre Dame. Um, I don't know if I can finish this piece this year, but... Um, looking at my non-full coverage whips that I have left and also taking into consideration my motivation to work on them. Um, if I'm going to get another finish for the year besides page finishes, this will be the one. So I'll try to fit it into homework uh, if and when I can and get this closer. Now I do have an awful lot to do because there's a whole lot more buildings, but um, it's bigger chunks of color and it's fun to work on. That's on 28 count Monaco that I uh, dyed myself. And then we come to Trick or Treat, which is my daily piece for the 90 day challenge in full coverage fanatics. I got my row finish that I wanted. I am under 30,000 stitches. I think I'm actually under, I'm at like 27,000 something stitches of black left now but this is deceiving there is so much black in these uh evergreen trees into the big tree trunk there's so much black and i have discovered that um doing extreme cross country as you're you know moving across the page and, and building things and being able to pick things out that's the fun part Doing a massive area of black where it's just mindless, you know, just filling things in. Not as much fun. Uh, it feels like it's never ending. But I got another row finish. So let me see if I can get it all in one in one frame in the shot for you. Looking through the fabric. Uh, there you go. Let me make sure it's focusing. This might be the last row I can get all in one shot. So there's the whole thing. Hopefully you can see that. And we'll bring it closer so you can see that last row that I got all the way across switch arms and you can see the massive amount of black I've been doing and you see my little blue mark right here I'm almost to the top of the next row pages before I can move over now there's not nearly as much black in this next row except for the trees on the sides so I fully expect, or I, I'm hoping to be able to, to finish this next row pages in the month of December. So I'm almost done here and I'll just keep moving across. And the black on this side for this row isn't as um, massive as, as this side. So, 
And I will be, of course, I'm stitching on this every day, but for the homework this week in these School Magical Stitches, I'm going to be using this one because the bonus task is to work on a whip that would be an excellent prison. Doesn't that look like an excellent prison? Because this is uh, in the book where Ron, Harry, and Hermione are taken prisoner into Malfoy Manor. So I will put that back in the scroll frame back together and continue working on it every day. I forgot to look to see how many stitches I got done for the month of November. Forgot to write it down. I know that because um, the, the scratch piece of paper that I'm working on is the one that I started when I uh, worked on this for the Tour de France in full coverage genetics. So I know that since the beginning of the Tour de France challenge, I have over 26,000 stitches on this. So I definitely did a page, over a page worth of stitches on it for October. And then I also counted on uh, Hogwarts Travel Poster. Those are two partial pages that I finished. So three page finishes for October or for November. Let me say the right month. And then I also got three finishes with the Princess Bookmark, Friendship Compass, and uh, Hogwarts Travel Poster. So talking about uh, this week's homework in the School Magical Stitches, we're traveling, we're doing uh, several things. Let me go to my notes so I can talk more intelligently. Um, <clears throat> so about chapter 19, um, Harry and Hermione are in the woods and Harry, find, Harry follows the silver doe and uh, finds the sword of Gryffindor and gathers his courage and um, gets the sword, gets rescued by Ron, and then they destroy the Horcrux. But as, after they open the uh, locket Horcrux, um, the locket starts playing mind tricks on Ron, saying he's second best, yada, yada, yada. So the task is to work on your second favorite whip. Well, in order to double count my stitches for all my groups, my second favorite whip right now is Beauty and the Beast 2017 by Tilton Crafts. I'm using it in full coverage fanatics this month for um, Winter Wonderland because the Beast Castle was stuck in winter and also by the numbers 1200 so I need to get 2400 stitches done. I have already done over 200 today so I've got one task done. I'm using it for three tasks this week in homework because I really like to get this page done this year because it is my only full coverage whip that I'm still using easy PDF. Because, you know, as I started using Pattern Keeper, this page was too far in work with stitches done all over it. It was too much work for me to, you know, transfer what I had done into Pattern Keeper on this particular page. I've already uploaded it into Pattern Keeper and marked off the pages complete that I have. But I have to finish this page in easy PDF and then I can continue the chart in Pattern Keeper. So, today I've been working down here. I finished up another shade of uh, navy blue on the beast. So I have over 200 stitches done on here. For the other tasks for homework um, that I'm using this piece for, for the Tale of Three Brothers, um, it was... The homework tells you the characteristics of each brother and it says pick a whip that fits one of these brothers and uh, say why and then do 100 stitches. Well, to me, the beast kind of fits the middle brother because he's arrogant and likes to humiliate people like he did the witch in the movie. And the third brother was humble and wise. Well, that sounds like it fits Belle to me. So this kind of fits two brothers. So I'm going to work on it for uh, that task. And also I'm going to work on it for uh, when they're listening to the Potter Watch uh, broadcast on the radio and everyone's name starts with R. 
the task is to work on a piece that has an item in it that begins with an R. Belle is holding a rose. So that is means 300 stitches or 610 stitches, which is only a fraction out of the 2400 that I need to do. But it's a start and I'm enjoying it. Um, so we'll see if once this is done, ooh, I just thought of it. Extra credit task I can use this for is um, a remembrance piece for Tonks or uh, Lupin, everyone that dies, Dobby, I forgot everyone else is listed, um, a piece that relates to them. Well, this kind of relates to uh, Lupin and Tonks, right? He was a, Lupin turned into a werewolf. I mean, that's kind of a beast and she fell in love with him. So. That's, I'm going to use that, uh, that for that extra credit task this week, probably once I get done with homework. And then, uh, let's see, the only other task in homework I haven't talked about is they go and visit the Love Goods house. And the Love Goods have uh, several unusual items that are brought up in the chapter. Dirigible plums in the garden. Um, he's, her, Luna's father says that she's searching for plimkies, which I think are a fish type creature, and then there's an insect type creature, and then the crumple horned snorkak on the wall that actually turns out to be in a rumpet horn or, or something like that. So it's a creature with a horn. I'm gonna use a uh, museum shelf, supersized color expansion museum shelf, because it has a triceratops skull in the corner. So I will put 210 stitches in on museum shelf. I did not bring that over to show you. Um, I will point it out where I put in my 200 stitches next week when I show you what I've done. So that is the plans. I don't know if I'll get some more extra credit, maybe watch the movie. Let's see, I need to do a celebration piece. And a piece that's a final design in a series. I don't know what I'm going to work on for that yet. <clears throat> so, let's see, do I have anything else to G to talk about? Yes. Um, about two years ago in Stitch Mania, someone posted a link to a um, lamp that you could buy at Target. I think it would, I haven't seen it in the store. I only saw it online. Well, I ordered the lamp. It's a fillable glass <clears throat> excuse me glass lamp and it comes to different sizes i just looked on um the target app it's still available plus there's other options as well i had before this before i saw this two years ago i never kept my orts i know some people make uh ornaments or shadow boxes and it, they they save their orts well i bought this lamp and it's been two years, exactly, because I, I got it just before Thanksgiving. And I just um, emptied all my little ort boxes next to my stitchy spots, and I put it in here, and I mashed it down already. So this is what two years of my orts look looks like. So this is the base of the lamp. This is uh, about 13 inches tall. And you can see it's not even not even a third full right now and mash it down but you can tell i've been working a lot on trick-or-treat due to all the black <laughs> all the black orts in there and then all the different colors on the bottom uh, i will leave a link in the description uh to this lamp um the version it did not come with a, a lamp shade you could um so you can buy a shade to fit whatever's style decor you have but so there's the top it's just like a top of a glass jar and then of course the lamp um lampshade fits in between the the socket and the light bulb which holds it on that that's just the shade that i bought it's a basic and i keep this on my uh bedside table so it just screws right screws right on i don't uh empty out my little ort buckets next to my stitchy spot but like a couple of times a year because they hold quite a bit so 
this will be neat when it fills up probably another 10 years or so. <laughs> um, but that is all of my stitching. I do have a deployment story for you. So if you're not interested in the um, Air Force stories, then I will see you next week. And thanks for joining me. Okay, so 13 years ago when I was deployed to the same location, um, towards the end of the, end of the deployment, I had less than a month left. Um, my captain, remember I was a first lieutenant, said, okay, I need you to take a team of maintainers and forward deploy to two locations and do barrier certifications. Okay, so what that means is me and a team, a team of eight guys, so I have my uh, Master Sergeant Pro Super and then um, seven staff techs and airmen in the various career fields of maintenance to go with me to forward deploy further into the field in the Middle East and to do a barrier certification. What that means is obviously our jets when we when we flew the combat missions always wanted to return to the base we were at. But things can happen. You can have bad weather. You can have a maintenance failure of some type on the airplane, like an in-flight emergency is what we call it, an IFE. And if you have a hydraulic problem on your airplane and need to IFE somewhere, that means you're landing before you're supposed to, because if you don't have hydraulics pretty soon, depending on which hydraulic system, because there's several, you may not be able to control the airplane. So you need to land before scheduled. And also depending on the hydraulic system, you may not have brakes. So then how does the airplane stop? Well, just like all your Navy aircraft that land on aircraft carriers and they have a tail hook, the F-15E also has a tail hook. And the barrier is, is the wire that they catch on the tail hook and stops the airplane. Now, uh, the reason we have to do recertifications on this barrier is because obviously it's not at a base that normally has, excuse me, has our type aircraft or it's been a certain amount of time since that was used. And so we need to test it to make sure it's functional. The way that we test it is to do a high speed taxi into it. So instead of doing a full landing, you're doing a high speed taxi. So imagine that you're doing a, a, taxi at the speed of trying to take off on a commercial airplane and you're taxing into it, dropping the tail hook and catching this wire to make sure that it stops. You have all kinds of uh, people, not only our maintenance crew to take care of the airplane if there's any problems, but you also have airfield ops for that particular base are there to make sure their equipment that we're certifying is also working as it's supposed to and to fix it in anything that needs to be. So <clears throat> we, I scheduled this, I set up all the um, logistics, if you will. We had to get airlift from our location to take us further in downrange to these bases with, we had one pallet of um, equipment that had toolboxes on it. And this is a metal pallet, bigger than what you normally think of a, as a wooden pallet. And also a piece of uh, rolling stock, which is, um, something that we needed to be able to turn the airplanes to get them ready to fly again. So I had to get seats for nine of us and have cargo space for the pallet and the rolling stock. Um, so scheduled that out, got us all out there. We flew the first trip on a C-17 and I was actually fortunate enough where the air crew of the C-17 invited me up to sit in their spare seat in the flight deck or the cockpit. Um, so I was able to have a front row seat, if you will, in the cockpit of a C-17 as we flew from our base further downrange. And we made one stop along the way. And I saw um, old bunkers, aircraft bunkers, from Operation Desert Storm that were still standing but obviously had been hit by bunker busters during Desert Storm. So that was pretty cool. So we get to our location and 
um, due to delays and things. And once we get to our tents, we were in, in at a mostly army base. Um, they had given us uh, firearms to take with us, but since we're at an army base and the army has different rules uh, as to when you're required to clear a weapon before going into a building, as soon as we landed, the army said, give us your guns. We're going to lock them up in this um, cargo container until you're ready to leave. So we're at an army base downrange with no weapons. We get to our tents finally about three o'clock in the morning and we have about three hours to get some sleep before the next day when our planes are scheduled to arrive. The idea was two planes were gonna fly their combat mission, land at the base, do the high-speed taxi, recertify uh, the barrier. We would turn the aircraft and they'd fly another mission. Well, we were ready about nine o'clock in the morning when they finally flew over. This was after an hour and a half FOD walk where, because this wasn't a airfield that normally is, um, has jets. So with helicopters, you don't care about little pieces of things that might damage your aircraft because helicopters, the blast is, you know, the, um, rotor blast is going down on little fighter jets. Those engines are closer to the ground and they suck up whatever screws, rocks, you name it, and it can damage the engine. So we took an hour and a half, spread out in a big line, the nine of us, fod walking um, the runway slash taxiway, picking up because of course their concrete runway is falling apart at the seams. So picking up any little piece of concrete, metal, fod walking the area so that our jets could land and um, wouldn't wouldn't uh, ingest anything into the engines. Finally, we see the airplanes fly over and they don't come back. They never land. We get the call through airfield ops that they said it was too hazy and they're not going to land. So we go back to our tents and later on, my captain calls me up and he says, Hey, if you look up in about 20 minutes, you'll see uh, some airplanes coming to land. Apparently there had been some wet, bad weather back at our original deployed location and these two jets were unable to land there. So they were wedding, weather diverting to us. And this was, um, yeah, we were not ready. All my guys were exploring the base, getting food, yada, yada. So I had to run and try to find everybody and collect everybody, get us back in our vehicle and get us out to the airfield. Well, of course, the airplanes had already landed by then. And we were able to uh, direct them to the area that we had prepared. And we did the certification. Now, I've got some pictures that were taken by the airfield ops guys. So to give you an example, all right. So this is the equipment that has the, the barrier, the wire, going across from this piece across the runway to that piece over there. There's your F-15E with the tail hook down. So he's going at a high rate of speed, about to hit the barrier. There you can see he's hit the barrier, he's got the wire on the tail hook, and the tail hook goes from being down to being horizontal. Uh, let me go back. The pictures aren't in order. Uh, okay. So, the barrier is not completely rigid. It, it gives. It's not like a rubber band or a bungee. It gives as the airplane pulls it forward so it doesn't bounce the aircraft backwards. But it, it gives with some tension to it. And then there you can see the barrier is tight and the aircraft has stopped. Now, let me go back to a close up. Here's some of my guys. Um, the aircraft is still running. This wire is connected to their headsets so they can talk to the air crew in the jet. And you can see here's the tail hook connected to the barrier. 
So they're making sure everything's okay and getting to the point where they can shut down the air aircraft and get it off the barrier. So there's another picture. You can see he's got the wire, the comm wire connected. It goes up by this wheel well and they can talk to the air crew. So that was fun, but you can also see how it was hazy and why the first um, air crew earlier that day thought it was too hazy. Um, and then it was a complete different adventure trying to get back, trying to get airlift for us. We ended up getting on a uh, C-130, hopping on it while it was still running. They opened up the back and you got to, at night, coming in, um, sitting on a C-130. I think it took us about 30 hours of being awake uh, to get back. And then even then we didn't have our pallet of equipment with us, but we're going back to the base where our whole squadron was. So it wasn't as important that time. And that was just one of the barrier engagements. The next one was two weeks later and I'm running out of time. So I can talk about that one next week. Um, everybody, I hope you have a good stitching week and getting ready for Christmas. We put our Christmas tree up this weekend. My girls are really excited. So, all right, guys. Have a good stitching week. Bye.